I just say I'm a spine surgeon, and you'll be surprised to know that um, I mean, I get so many patients, especially from uh, pediatric departments and mostly all departments who come to us for backache and stuff like that. And I think so. I mean, just for the last uh, 20 years, which I've been here, I've treated about 17 patients of tuberculosis pioneer. 17. And out of them, the maximum, I think so, eight or nine have been from the Department of Pediatrics here. So, in the bottom of I know that you guys are overworked and a lot of uh, time you guys spend on wards and stuff like that. And you will not get time to look after your health. But I think so, this was important that uh, you understand that where we come from and what we need to do in work life balance. We are overburdened, no doubt. <clears throat> Our <clears throat> trauma residents in orthopedics uh, work 12 hours a day. Our time is from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, that means they come at about 6.37 in the morning to trauma ward, and they leave not before about 12, 12.30 at night. Similar must be the same for you, but uh, officially having 12 to 15 hours rosters and just running from here to here, and uh, I, I don't think so you get time to eat breakfast also or whatever, but it really catches up, and uh, you may not realize it now, but yes, in the later, later part, mid-40s, something you will understand that you'll have severe uh, postural problems. I mean, we all know the willing horse is always overworked. We all do that. I mean, we've been PGI. Yes, we have to work, but we still, if we have time, about five, ten minutes, instead of spending time on phones, we can do something for our own bodies. You'd be surprised to know that <clears throat> India, the average time spent on mobile is about 4.7 hours. Uh, my, my, both my sons have a screen lock, which I use from my phone here. And uh, I see how much data, how much time they spend. And so my younger one is 13. So he spends maybe three to four hours, and when I catch him, he's saying this is homework or this or that, but I know it's WhatsApp and YouTube and stuff like this. So even kids are <clears throat> doing three to four hours, and I'm, so I won't be surprised if you guys are hitting at least five hours a day. Yeah. I mean, I just checked a couple of phones yesterday in my class of orthopedic residents. I said, show me your phone, show me. And then when I saw the screen time, it was five to six hours. In that, there was Netflix and some, some games which they play in OT and plus, 1% was like studying, you know, but the rest of all was recreation. But yes, we, we take our time, and this is how we take our time. And <clears throat> in our time, we had uh, male gender and female gender. We used to go around and you know, have girlfriend, boyfriend. That's also stopped now. I don't know what the guys are doing these days, the residents here. All day, we were just stuck. So you can well imagine how much we are glued, <clears throat> especially after COVID, we've been glued to it very, very badly. So if you have to give one life advice, I'd be don't use too mobile too much. It's very easy said and done, but if you can, nothing like it. Postural wise, you'll be surprised uh, the way you guys are sitting right now, the way you guys came from your work, the way you go to your, the ward and make notes, or the way you're going to do rounds in NICU and stuff like that. You're going perpetually looking down at reports and uh, stuff like that. So yes, it's very bad, but a good stance and posture reflect a proper state of mind. So if if you can, Wholly try to understand what you're talking about will be good. I'm a spine surgeon. I, I'm not a uh, talker. I'm not, I don't like to give lectures and stuff. We like to cut up people. Right? But if I can, I'm just trying to understand that this is a really important topic for people here. Does posture matter for doctors? I mean, if you look at the literature that if there was a study carried out uh, last year, about 5,000 surgeons, 68% uh, reported generalized pain. <clears throat> and I can... Um, Tell you that from uh, ENT, I, ophthal, I mean, ophthal, I told you, and um, gynae, general surgery, plastic surgery, pediatric surgery, every single surgical department of PGI, from professor to assistant to resident, has probably come to us in OPDM. Everyone. I mean, the head of departments, even the head of department taken medical leave from me. Yeah, so don't be surprised. Huh? So, but they've all come to us at some stage or other while they're doing surgery. Surgeries may up to be a 12, 15 hour surgery. As a surgeon perspective, I can tell you that it is really causing a lot of uh, damage. It affects the patient that the patient then also have to extend and leave the absence for retiring early. A lot of patients, a lot of uh, surgeons, you will realize even ophthalmologists, even dentists, as a matter of fact, the way they sit and do the surgery, it affects their uh, way of dwelling and their productivity decreases as they go by. Decade wise, if you see by, I mean, you're supposed to be the most productive and when you hit 45 or 50, you should be doing like 12, 15 hour surgeries, but it's not the same now. I mean, I've seen my, my colleagues who will give surgeries to residents, you do the surgery, I'm just sitting. What are they doing? They're watching Netflix, yeah. But still, on the hand, but they're tired to do these surgeries and a lot of issues happen to this. So we want to <clears throat> understand this. So just to understand, you all know, you guys are all pediatric, pediatric uh, uh, fellows and you guys know what 
spines are, but we have three different spines. One is cervical spine, thoracic spine, and lumbar spine. There are different curves, like a C-shaped curve at the cervical spine, ulta C-shaped curve at the thoracic, and again a C-shaped at the lumbar spine. So these are normal uh, postural, which you all should have. If you have and maintain this, you're good. You can go read about this, which muscles are involved. There are many muscles involved for posture and stuff like that. But just to realize there are, there are about maybe 30, 30 muscles involved to just keep you erect. So if someone has given you erect spine, uh, that's the only difference we have from the monkeys here. So if you can maintain these guys, they're good. And you can't take them for granted. You have to maintain and make sure that you keep doing these surgeries. Ladies, on the other hand, they, you know, they, they get, uh, they get uh, pregnant and they get a pendulous abdomen. They get a very, very weak uh, core. So uh, we have hordes of uh, pregnant ladies, uh, especially residents who come to us in CGNC who've had children, and they have very weak, weak abdomens. And it take, to build up a core, it takes up to six months here. So if you're good now and you do exercises, you should not be hitting this problem later on. Why are we suffering from bad posture? Like I was saying, it's the leading cause, phones, televisions, and laptops. I, <clears throat> in Department of Orthopedics, uh, when we joined, uh, we bought a uh, couple of books, which are about 30,000 rupees here. And I had to borrow money from my parents, and I said, I need to buy a Campbell, which is two, two it's basically five kilos, uh, this thing. Pediatrics, I don't remember, Nelson, I don't know which, which, which uh, book you guys read here. But now, no one is buying books here. No, the last six to seven batches in the department of orthopedics, no one has ever bought a physical books. All their books are on their phones here. I don't know about you guys, but um, for books are on the iPad or on the phone. What happens is when they want to go correlate or read something, they will go back and stuff, read on the smartphone or the iPad or the laptop. So the e-books are really causing an issue because you're going back and reading these things. Yeah. So there's no time for exercise. I asked my resident, uh, the guys who joined six months back, and we have a mentorship program in the Department of Orthopedics in which one faculty looks after about five or six residents. And those residents, are, they stick with you for three years. You take them out for coffee, you do their bank account. Uh, for South Indians, I've even bought uh, shoes because they refused to buy shoes. <laughs> I don't know why. So we, these guys who come stay with us for three uh, years, I mean, I asked them, well, frankly, it's an open thing. What's the issues? You know, so they kill us that this guy didn't give us leave and we're not, the thesis is not complete. But when it comes down to work, you'll be surprised. They, they literally don't get time. Yeah. I mean, I think so. If they come at work at 8 o'clock, 7.57 or something, they wake up here. Yeah. And they just come and then they don't have breakfast and surgery all day go home by 12, 12, 30, and sleep again. I don't have time for surgery. I mean, no time for studies, so let alone for their own health. But it's a big issue. Simple test which we ask patients uh, or residents, anyone who comes to me, you know, they come with a huge bag. I don't know how much you guys carry in a bag. I don't know what you carry in a bag. But they, they, you, they carry their bags, they've got a stethoscope, and they're stooped front. And whenever someone comes, there are already two friends of his who come, all girls or boys or whatever. And they all stoop like this, and they're looking at me, sir, we have backache, and my neck is this. You can close your eyes and know what they're talking about. So first thing I tell them to go walk by, stand by the wall here. So if you're able to stand by the wall, so basically, I'll just show you the thing here. If you stand by the wall, you should be able to put your uh, full head and your buttocks and your back back, and leave about two inches from the heels. So you stand like this, and then you walk away from the wall. This is, and if you can maintain this for what? A minute or two minutes, that is the right posture. I doubt it if you guys can do it, but this is a simple test which you understand. Are the muscles firing well? Muscles firing means if the other muscles acting well to keep your erect spine. A good posture, <clears throat> uh, you may be taught this in NCC or in whenever you guys were young, but yes, these are very, very important things. I mean, tell our, we tell our children also not to stoop, but if you stand straight and the tall with your shoulders back, keep your head level and line with your body, pull your abdomen, Keep your shoulders a width apart. Don't lock your knees. Bear your weight primarily on the balls of your feet, in the front of the feet. The minute you do that, you'll always be looking that. And you have to understand this simple posture just makes your, if you, you feel confident. And uh, even when you're giving exams, we guys are going to go take exams everywhere here. And if a resident is stooped and standing like this in front of me, I automatically feel that this guy is uh, not confident. So if you stand up like this, just go, you gain up, up to one or two inches of height and you make eye contact, you are doing very, very well. So simple things which you understand. Posture-wise, there are two postures. One is the dynamic posture. This is just a theory I'm going to teach you. It's how you hold yourself while like moving, like walking, running, or bending to pick up something. This is dynamic posture. This is very important. Everyone should have this posture. 
Static posture is how you guys are sitting right now. You're not doing anything at all, but you're just sitting down the way you're sitting. Are your backs touching the, uh, the, uh, the seat or not? Are your buttocks back? Are you bent forward? Are you lying down and really listening to me? So this is static posture. There's so many things happening just due to posture you realized. You see all these things, what's happening? This is, this could be a, you could be going to a psychiatrist, uh, a clinic, could be an orthopedics clinic or a pain medicine clinic. You, these are all things that happen just due to, just basically due to posture. I'll explain you how. So here I'm just going to talk about neck pain or how it's affecting the types of posture, the prevention, how we can do it, how we can manage them conservatively in your place, how you, in your way. Tips for sitting and standing, a small video which I was asked by Dr. Jain to just give, which you can just see for some, Gora will speak, so it'll be nice, you can hear that. So neck pain uh, prevalence is 27 per 1,000 population in 2019. I'm pretty sure this is higher now, and even after COVID, it's, this is pre-COVID, yeah, so it must have gone really high. People on average spend five to six hours a day with health tilted reading and texting. So what's happening to the neck, I'll just explain, but I'm pretty sure if you guys see your phones, uh, five to six hours per day, I'm not saying you're not working, but this is uh, not productive working. You're looking down, checking reports, your WhatsApp, you're messing with people, and someone sends you a report, you spend a minute to read that report and stuff like that. So a lot of stuff happening by just this. That includes about 700 to 1400 hours of bad posture. Yeah. So, I mean, 20% of your life you're gonna spend sleeping, rest 80% out of that, um, 20% you're gonna have a bad posture and like this. So literally people are going to go, you know, I think so another 20 years if the phones or something doesn't happen, we're all going to be walking like idiots here. So New York Post article is tech is turning millions into generation of hunchbacks. I'm pretty sure all millions here except Professor Jeet is the only guy with white hair. But rest all you guys look like young millions out here. Dr. Saini also looks very young here. Yeah. So what are the neck pain uh, risk factors? You, uh, this psychologic, physical, psychological and biological. I mean, this is not a theory test for you, but I'm just trying to tell you that there are many issues when you have a pain. So when a patient comes to us with a bad posture or whatever, we actually look at the wholesome picture. We try to see the pain generators, where are they coming from? Are the patient, uh, am I just going to blindly say that your posture is bad? Could be maybe having some other problems. So what the thing is, a chicken and egg story, yeah. So a patient has stress anxiety of exams, on your at work and stuff like that, he gets, uh, he loses his uh, self-esteem, he kind of stoops down and walks. So the bad posture not to blame, the anxiety and stress is to blame for the bad posture. So we have to go in depth to find out exactly what's happening. Why I'm saying this is because <clears throat> we all look for a quick fix, you know? just give me some medicine, I'll be back tomorrow, or give me two weeks rest, sir, I can't cope up with my work and stuff like this. The issue is that if we have to understand why it's happening, because painkillers will not actually work here. They'll work here for 48 hours, 72 hours. But after that, we'll have to actually go in depth and see what exactly is happening. There's a word called text neck, yeah. It's by Dr. Dean Fishman, he's a chiropractor. Text neck or turtleneck uh, posture can be described as repeated stress injuries and pain sustained from excessive watching or texting on handheld devices for a long period of time. I mean, we, the first, I mean, I do a lot of cervical spine uh, surgeries and we've done um, multiple, we do 500 surgeries a year and out of that, I think it's about 150, 200 must be of cervical spine young to age and all. But most of these patients who are coming to us, you'll be surprised, uh, just, just if I tell them to put the phone on the side, if I tell the husband to take, the, take it from the lady or vice versa, whatever, or from the children, most of these conditions get okay. So it's just basic uh, thing is causing an issue. There are many uh, stuff which is happening that higher prevalence and probability of developing both bad and back pain if you're holding a while more than 10 hours a week. So we are holding what, I mean, uh, at least 70 hours I mean, a week, I think so, so seven times. A recent study in Thailand showed that text neck syndrome has become a global, I don't know why they're doing studies in Thailand, there's so much more to do there, but they're showing that text neck syndrome has become a, a global epidemic affecting large and number populations. So there's a lot of happening everywhere, and there are a lot of articles, and I don't want to put all the articles there to bore you in the morning, but just basically if you're walking with a phone also, the way you're walking and the way you walk also is causing a bad bag. I'll just explain how that is happening. China syndrome, so we had gone to uh, uh, Beijing about two years, two, three years back and for a conference and uh, uh, there's an orthopedic hospital there and uh, Professor Manley was the head of the department, so he invited us for a similar talk, we had gone there. And after giving the talk, so we said we just give a, uh, we just walk around the hospital. That hospital had 1,000 beds for orthopedics itself, only for orthopedics. I don't know about pediatrics and other stuff, but for pediatrics it had 1,000 bedded hospital. And PGI, we have about 100 beds maximum. So you can well imagine there are 1,000 beds in China. 
So we went to the OPD and we went to the surgical, and it was into X. You can go whatever value you can imagine is an into X in China. So we went to the OPD, the clinics, and we went to the clinics, and there was a long uh, where there were uh, there were about twelve plaster technicians, just guys who put plasters. So the twelve of them in standing in one row, they was just doing plasters, plasters, plasters. So we called our translator and asked him what is the commonest thing. So the guy, the one of the translators, asked them, see. So he says we put 35,000 uh, plasters per month on ankles only. Yeah. So that's 35,000 plasters per month on an ankle, on ankles, just ankles, not even talking about wrists and stuff like that. And we said, what's the cause? The main cause is because these people are walking like this and they fall off the berm. Yeah. They are crossing roads, they fall off. They are crossing uh, anywhere and they fall off. So third, in Beijing itself, in one hospital, there are 18 hospitals in Beijing. So in one hospital, only 35,000 people are getting this. So in China, wherever you go, there are, text, there are signs put up now that the guy is crossing the road like this. So there's a sign made of a person holding a, uh, uh, this thing. It's like deer crossing. Similarly, there's a sign of a person standing doing this. So you have to go slow your car there. So it's amazing. It's in Europe also it started here. So I think it will start here in India soon. So a lot of people are just looking down and texting. It's sad also because... Most of the guys who come to us with road traffic accidents, we get 15 to 20 polytrauma per day, yeah. and bad, bad injuries, everything's broken, chest injuries, stuff like that. If you dealt with them, even a lot of them, 20-30% were on mobile phones when they had an accident, yeah. So in Chandigarh also, even they're not even scared of the police, still they're on, uh, something or something is coming and they have to check that message, and they come into accident. They may get a, have some injury or they may cause someone else harm, so it's very sad. Uh, neck pain is uh, four types. One is uh, no sign symptoms. It's not major pathology. Everyone's, everyone's had it here, I'm pretty sure. Grade two is uh, there is uh, no symptoms uh, causing but little bit uh, issue with active daily living. Grade three is no sign symptoms, major pathology, but may include DTRs and sensory motor effects. It starts affecting the neck and they may have a disc prolapse and stuff. Grade four is something actually happens. So patients had a fracture and stuff like that. So when the text neck is grade 1, 2, and I'm seeing a lot of patients of grade 3 also come to us with this same initial issue. This is a slide I want you to see and remember tonight. If you can remember one thing, one slide from my talk, yeah. The sub one on the right, the extreme one towards me, that is a typical feature of any resident I've seen walking around here. Yeah. They're just texting and walking like this. When you're walking and your chin is touching your uh, uh, sternum and you are just doing this, I mean, a lot of people are doing this, and I think so everyone does this. 60 pounds pressure goes on cervical spine. 60 pounds, yeah. That's about 27, 28 kilos of weight pressure goes on your stuff. So you can imagine we are supposed to be like this. And I don't think so anyone zero degree guys ever I've seen till now. 15 also I've not seen. Everyone's from 30 to 60 degrees. I'm see, this, the last one is the most common one I've seen. Even when they are waiting in OPD outside your clinic, waiting to come inside, they're all resting their chins here and playing or doing what they're 60 pounds pressure at about five to six hours a day, you can well imagine what is happening to your spine. I mean, you're getting MRIs, X-rays done, the cervical spine, which is supposed to be C, it's like an ultra C. And plus, they're having disc prolapses, they're getting back aches and stuff like that. So a lot of issues happening just through simple, the way you guys do your uh, mobile phones. So you got, you got these kind of postures, you got kyphosis, the bending it forward, you got a flat back, the lotuses is gone, you got a sway back when you sit, stand like this, and you got a forward head thing. So I'm just going to touch what it is. Forward head is something that happens due to your, the way you guys use your phones. And uh, everyone, I think so 60, 70% of people sitting here will be having this. There's no one who's like this. If I make you guys stand by the wall or you just go after this, go stand by the wall, you will not manage standing for more than two minutes. You just put your head like this, you're not able to, because what's happened is the minute you've been using your phone and standing like this or doing stuff like this, the muscles in the back, they start getting weak, they get elongated, and you get a buffalo neck, yeah. A lot of ladies, uh, sorry, but ladies get this more often, and they get a huge neck pain, and they say, I have pain here all the time, sir, we have pain here, and it goes up to the head, goes down to the arms, and they have... Basically, what happens is the muscles are not used. They just start getting elongated. They lose their elasticity. They become uh, flaccid, and the uh, fat deposition comes in it. So next thing which you get is fibromyalgia, and then you get chronic fatigue syndrome, which is a bad thing, and you have insomnia and stuff like this. So simple, just the phone is killing you. Symptom-wise, you can just see there's so many symptoms. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to go into e detail, but you can get muscle spasms. You get poor balance. You get headaches and migraines, which is very common due to stuff like this. 
fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome, which is very, very common. It's coming to us. I mean, even any patient, anyone who's having uh, the 12 points, pain, hair, hair, around the breast, be, uh, below, just uh, underneath the dimple of venous, both trochanters, around the thighs and the knees, having um, um, irritation, irritability syndrome, you're not you, you're always irritated all the time, you can't sleep more than five hours a uh, night. This is all part of chronic fatigue syndrome, and it's not easy to treat these patients. And the triggering point is basically, could be vitamin D deficiency or anxiety issue, but it's 30% is due to the smartphone usage or your bad posture. If you don't want all this coming to you, uh, the simple thing you avoid and decrease your thing. So like I said, when you are standing like this, you not you stand just like this. You, if you think this is normal, but this is not normal. Your head is actually stooped about one or two centimeters front of the sagittal line. So this is causing the muscles are going long and weakened. Then the, these ones, the ones which are just holding your head straight, they are also not working. You get eye symptoms, you get uh, uh, difficulty sleeping, ring in the ear, eye pain. These are all documented things from journals, and we've seen this in history. I'm thinking, not making this up. You can get low immunity, attention deficit disorders. Autism is also attributed to this. And you guys must be treating autism, but this is also attributed to this. There's another slide. I gave this talk to uh, kids in school, and uh, I mean, all the mothers thanked me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But uh, the children also abused me. My kids, friends, and all abused me because I cut down their uh, uh, this one or two hour technology. So they asked me, doctor, how much do you use? So I said, I, my mind doesn't have a phone only. I just made it up here. So then all the phones were confiscated here. Yeah. So it's very, very funny, but, but my phone, my son has a phone. But 60% psychological score. I can say for a fact, yeah, I've had fights with my children just because of phone. The minute I take the phone away or take the PlayStation away or something, they get irritably and start talking back. And, and it's a fact, and this is happening. Kyphosis refers to an exaggerated curvature. This is uh, normally the kyphotic spine. You will not get it now. You can get it to get the divagus hump or you get stuff like this when you grow old. After 45 to 5, you need to have a lot of calcium and supplements to make sure you don't get this. A lot of ladies get sarcopenia and they get stuff like this. But yes, we've started getting uh, low BMD and the DEXA scan of minus 2, 2.5, even in residents. I mean, residents who are coming to me at 30, 31, who just in the last final year of SR ship, they are getting very bone, uh, low bone density. Sway back is called hyperlotosis. We've seen people even walk like that. They think it's cool, but that just becomes a way of walking. Again, the muscles are very loose, and the younger the guys, the million, the first two, three guys residents, they usually walk like this. I don't know how they walk like that. You know? Flat back is basically the, uh, the uh, it's also a bit bad posture. The, the lordosis, which is the one curve you should have in your spine, it goes away. You just lose your curves, and you're like a straight guy. And it's also called axial back pain. So you, when do you need to come to me? I'm not saying don't come to me when you have these things, but you need to come to us a minute before that. Ask for the physiotherapist or anyone. But there are a lot of red flag signs, and a lot of patients are getting affected, and they are getting... Uh, I'm not saying the bad posture is causing that patient requires surgery, but the bad posture is causing a, a disc prolapse and an axial disc disindentation, and patients getting canal stenosis or pain in the arms and necks, and they end up getting surgery done. Prevention, I mean, I, like I'm, I can't say this enough, but this will come in fine. Like when someone, you tell someone, um, we have to agree this is addiction, yeah? With addiction on these phones, these smartphones, it's like when you want to give up alcohol and you want to give up smoking. There is, you can go to any rehab program in the world, but the minute you decide yourself, I want to stop it, that's when you stop it, yeah. So similarly, I think so addictions and stuff, I cannot give you lectures on why you should stop your uh, phones and smartphones, but it'll come in from you, your, yourself will understand that, yes, this is enough, I'm getting neck pain, and I know this is happening to the neck pain. And while I'm talking, a lot of people are doing this, yeah, so maybe they're getting affected, yeah. So prevention, like I said, is the key. Um, uh, conservative treatment, there is a lot, yeah. No? So rest, uh, there's medication, physical therapy, injections. Uh, we have, I mean, I'm in OPD there, I'm in office there, but we find residents holding me in the parking lot also. So there are two types, huh? one resident, one will come just, I have my, uh, the commonest cause, my dadi passed away or my bhua has passed away. Actually, they want to go to Shimla or Manali or whatever. So we give, I give them a lot of medical, yeah. I make a little, like, enjoy. I mean, I, I know how much you guys are going through. But if you guys take medicals, I'm open up to medicals. But, you know, this, maling this malingering or what having this thing is going to catch up. It becomes chronic, and you have to give your thesis and all, I understand. But then it comes again. You're not you're just avoiding it. So you, I'm not saying rest and activity. No backache in the world requires rest. I mean, we have patients come to us. 
you can take backache and relax if you want, but we do not recommend backache for any kind of pain in the spine. If you have neck pain, I want you to go for a half an hour walk. If you have back pain, I want you to go for a walk. This is the only way to get friends. You have to beat uh, pain with pain. You cannot rest it out and feel better. That is the old school. You don't do that anymore. Yeah. So that is this. Medications and all, we do not like recommending stuff, vitamin D and stuff like this. I don't like to give uh, painkillers to anyone. I mean, it's very, you, they, you see in there that bag of yours which you're carrying, Alibaba Wala, there are Dolomid MR and these Mobizox and I don't know what you put inside and you pop one and you go for your thing. you having a suminat and go for your lecture. So a lot of patients having, a lot of residents having backache and, uh, and they're just popping pills and migraines and stuff like that. So there's a lot of issues that are going to happen in the long run if you keep doing this. Injections and all we give, it's, it's faster. I mean, a lot of patients, a lot of residents have come to us, a lot of surgeons who I need, a, I need to do a long Whipple surgery tomorrow or I'm doing this. I have given surgery, neck pain, in, I mean, injections in the neck just to make sure their acute episode goes. So yes, that is part of the thing. There's a lot of stuff happening. You can do whatever you want. You can come to us, you can understand. Uh, I mean, basically, there's a lot of stuff on it. But basic thing, if you can go for a walk, half an hour and 45 minutes in the morning, evening, it solves everything in the world. You can do a brisk walk. It will look after your heart. If you walk half an hour, 45 minutes per day, the, we are not, uh, we are, the good thing about humans is we are not used to walking like this. So we, when the, ten, we, the minute we tend to walk more than 10 minutes, our posture automatically starts correcting. Our, we, tend to loop, we tend to balance our head on our body and our back also gets corrected. So if you're walking again without the phone, you know, if you're walking, put your phone on the side, you walk 20, 30 minutes, automatically your posture gets fine. So that's the easiest thing for us. You don't need to learn hi-fi exercise and stuff like that, but that is the commonest thing. The way you are sitting right now, yeah? so what basically you want to sit with your back straight and shoulders back, your buttock should touch the back of your chair. I mean, there should be a device here. The minute who's not touching the buttock, they should get like electrocuted on there. Yeah? That's the only way to, because I 7.45 morning class, I know, it's, sorry, but this is the way it is. Your curve should be maintained if you can, and you draw yourself up and, you know, just sit out and put your shoulders out like this, and then just hold the breath for 10 seconds and just let it go. That's the ideal posture when you should have when you sit and uh, release the position for, and this is a typical position. You have to distribute your body weight evenly on both hips. Make sure you're not turning and keep moving. So there are a lot of fidgety children who have seen who keep moving the one arm, one leg over the other. That also is not actually helping. So try to maintain that posture for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It's like meditation, yeah. And you keep your bend your knees at a right angle. Use a footstool or rest in your body if possible. And keep your feet flat on the floor and try to avoid sitting in the same position. We, what we tell our, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but uh, our residents are just walking all the time. If I see a resident sitting, I scold him, why the hell are you sitting here? So, I mean, the, the guys who come to us, uh, the, the bankers and the corporates and all the guys, so we tell them to keep their, you know, most important thing, like the pen or a scalp or, uh, or a staple or something away from the desk, yeah? So they have to get up in every 20, 30 minutes, 25 minutes to go pick up a pen, sign, and then go drop that pen back, yeah? If you have everything around in that small uh, kingdom of yours, then you're not going to move and you're going to become like a sloth there. Yeah. Correct sitting position, everyone asks this question. Yeah. You must have Googled it, you must have seen. Uh, <clears throat> it's just this height, this is, this is the way to sit. You gain the way you have taught you how to sit. You put your back, body, your buttocks should sit, and your hands should rest. Huh? There, should, there should be a rest here for your hands. Your, if you're typing all the time, there should be a, uh, like a pad, like a silicone pad you can get on Amazon. 500 bucks here, and you can put there, rest your wrist also, very important. Small, small thing, I know you guys publish a lot here. So when you're doing all that stuff, make sure you're using this. This is the way to put, the other way of sitting is sitting in a rajai, in your warm room and putting your legs up and putting the laptop and open it up, that's not the position to sit. That's the most comfortable position to sit, but that's not the correct position to sit, yeah. So again, if someone calls you, you do not twist your back, simple things, you twist your whole chair and ask them, stuff like this. When you're standing up, you try to use your hands there. Simple. If you try to, if you all have uh, arm rest, if you try to use hand, just use your arm while getting up. It's just a habit. You start doing this, 50% of your body weight will go down. So when, when I'm standing like this, I'm standing like this, more suppose 100% of my body weight is going on my discs, yeah? So when I, was, when I get up from sitting posture, 120 times the posture. So if I'm 70 kilos, when I'm getting up from the sitting chair, when you want to get up, you're going to get 70% more uh, force Newton on your thing. So if you always use your hands, it's going to dissipate by half. So simple things, just use your hands while getting up. It doesn't show that you're old or whatever like that, but just hold, hold your hands while getting up, and then you stand up. 
Avoid bonding forward at your waist. Again, the bad posture is like this. If you are standing like this, the minute you breathe and you put your chest out, everything gets straight, yeah. So this is very simple. Another thing, this is for the metrosexual guys out here and the ladies here. You guys all have long mirrors or whatever you have mirrors. You just check yourself when you come to a, you, I know you don't check yourself today, but when you come here to give that flower and that usher and conference where you wear those sadis and all, that's when you check yourself in the mirror. That's exactly, you can do that once a week or twice a week. Yeah. You check your reflection, see or see, see from the side, see from the front, how you are and how your posture is. Take deep breaths and then let the breath go. And when the way, the way you stand is actually your actual posture. Yeah. Or other ways, randomly, someone takes a snap of you and you can understand this, how I was sitting in the lecture, how I was sitting in the conference and stuff like that. So this is really good because a lot of vanity here. A lot of people like selfies. So if you can take your own body selfie, you'll do better. You all carry bags, yeah, na? you all carry bags. And uh, the right way to carry bag, there are many, many ways, yeah. So if you're carrying a bag, you make sure when you're carrying your bag, the, the main part of the bag should not cross the hips here. The, it should fall here. If the bag is going out, down to the buttocks, you're carrying it wrong, you're going to cause load on your back. So what are you going to counter that? You're going to go like this. So you bend about 10, 15 degrees just to carry the weight. My children's school bags uh, were 12 kilos. Yeah, 12 kilos for a child's school bag. 12 kilos is a lot. Yeah. I don't know what books. So it's gone down to about eight now, but still there. Again, and again comes down to 10 kilos. So for a five foot kid, 30 kilos, carrying 12 bags. I, it's very sad, but that's how it is. If someone is uh, carrying, some ladies are carrying purses, I mean, a cross purse is a better way to carry it. You can carry your phone and stuff like that. But make sure you carry, and if you have your bag, you can strap it like this. And you, there's a straps that you get in the bag, which can be tied in front. It looks uh, stupid, but that's the way it, it dissipates the weight, and you can control it better, yeah. Empty bag, like I said, uh, so if you're carrying an empty bag, you know, I mean, if you're carrying for style or whatever, right, you, you tend to, you know, counter it, and you tend to get a bad posture even from that. So you keep putting it up to make sure it doesn't slide, so stuff like that. So you... There are ways to carry a bag also to avoid the, avoid looking down in a fort. I mean, A is typical. Huh? Everyone is A. Huh? No one is going to be B. You know? But if you can be B, it's not bad. Basically, it's, uh, you have to put your arm up, your elbow up, and just get an eye contact. I mean, you meant to do this. I mean, nobody, when we are sitting, we're just looking down at the phone. Ek minute, ek minute, baat kar rahe, you, some, aapne hai, well, you're just going on the phone. Between every patient, you're going on the phone. I have seen residents, I also do it, yeah. Between every single patient, I'll go check my WhatsApp. I don't know what's going to come, what message is going to come. But we do that, you know. So fubbing is about, the rule of thumb is seven seconds, yeah. So everyone holds their phone uh, every seven seconds. So you can well imagine, every seven seconds, you tend to look at your phone to see if you received a lottery or something, I don't know. So, but it's happening. So basic exercises, I'll just show you a video, but I'll show you, these are good exercises. One is stand by the wall. You stand by the wall and you tend to, you know, uh, get your posture correct and the, just walk away from the wall. That's how you want to maintain your posture. But exercises, you have uh, flexion exercises, basic exercise I can make you guys do right now. If you guys just, can you put your uh, uh, shoulders up to your ears? Everyone. It's, also, Professor Jeet, I don't care you actually. Come on, everyone, all of you guys do one like this. And you go up like this, and you hold it like this for 10 seconds, you'll open up your spine. And the other exercise we want to do is, you just put your elbows back. You can stand up or whatever. You can try to put your elbows back and try to touch them. If you can't touch them, tell them someone to, to touch them. In case you're in the ward, you can just go by the, uh, uh, by the wall and just press. What you want is, this is uh, just trying to put your elbows together. This will open up muscles which you didn't know you have. And this will really make you good, yeah. This is another, uh, sorry, 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 this is another one which you can do. Uh, this is part of the exercise I'm telling you. Chin tucks, again, you can do the exercise while sitting. You just press your chin like this, hold it like this for 5-10 seconds, and then leave it. You press it like this for 5 seconds, and then leave it. Keep repeating it. This is at the desk. It makes these guys strong, makes your muscles strong, and it will really help you. Single extension, you can do exercise at home. You can sit upright in a chair. Feet planted, lift one leg to horizontal position, hold it like that for 10 seconds, let it go, and the other leg. So basically, these are things which you are doing while working. I can drop this, leave this uh, 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 PowerPoint here, only you can make it a PDF and distribute it among yourselves. Yeah. And so you can do it exercise later on. And I'll give it to Dr. Yadav, he can distribute it to you guys. Again, stand up straight and tall, keep your shoulders back, put your stomach in, put your weight, most in the balls of your feet, the front part of the feet, make sure to try to just 
walk on the ball of the feet automatically your weight uh, gets uh, straight keep your head level let your arms hang down laterally by side keep your feet about shoulder width apart so the the minute you don't try to stand like this you can stand like this yeah <clears throat> so bear hugs this is another this one you can just give yourself a hug yeah and uh, i remember i should do this in children yeah you should hug like this it just shows some girls kissing you so but i'm just saying this is something you can do and you can try to do it as much as possible it opens up muscles in your body calf raises is also very easy you waiting for your consultant who is coming in 2 minutes up the lift for the rounds for the guy doesn't show up for 20 minutes i know na you just do this while standing at the ward yeah just stand keep walking stand on your toes stand on your heels stand on your toes stand on your heels this simple thing which also will do wonders of good for you a small video you can see it if you have time you have time no time yeah. you have time this is something's a 7 8 minutes video and you're someone who sits for the majority of the day whether it's sitting at home at the office driving or just general in activity then odds are your body has over time adapted to become a very efficient sitter yes your body over time actually gets really good at sitting by turning off certain muscles and over activating other muscles And when you then combine this with the fact that most people don't just sit and instead slouch forward, lean sideways, and do all kinds of things to make themselves more comfortable, it leads to a host of problems and imbalances that arise when you're not sitting. And typically, what this will lead to is more or less the development of the following posture: where the head protrudes forward, the mid back and shoulders round forward, and the lower back arches excessively with an anterior tilt of the pelvis. To make matters worse, this posture is often accompanied with a host of asymmetries created by various sitting habits, which can lead to one side of the body being tighter than the other, and as a result, create a slight drooping on that one side, for example, which all in all can lead to tightness and aches and pains in the neck, the shoulders, the lower back, and various other areas, while making it difficult to properly execute various exercises in the gym, let alone comfortably stand and move throughout the day. But luckily, there are easy ways to reverse this and prevent it from worsening if you spend the majority of the day sitting. Because based on the analysis of multiple papers, we know that these various postural patterns created by sitting are simply a result of various muscles that have become underactive and weak over time, and other muscles that have become overactive and shortened over time, which in effect pull your body into this new posture. Therefore, to reverse this, I'll be showing you two quick and easy five-minute corrective routines that you can do virtually anywhere, and are designed to mobilize these tightened areas, strengthen the weakened areas. and work on correcting any asymmetries you may have as well. The first routine will focus primarily on the upper body and the second routine will focus primarily on the lower body, each consisting of four exercises. And then towards the end of the video, I'll show you how to then go about implementing them into your day. But for now, let's jump into the first routine. The first exercise we'll use to mobilize the upper body is over and backs, which can be done with either a band or a towel. This exercise is used to open up and stretch the shortened chest and shoulder muscles that are pulling you forward into this hunched posture. Here, you'll simply grip the towel or band with a wide overhand grip, pull it apart slightly to create tension, and then, without bending your elbows, raise it over your head and behind your back, going only as far as you're capable of. Then, when it gets behind your back, focus on pulling your hands apart. Start with a wider grip, and over time, narrow your grip as your mobility improves. Next, we're going to move on to the cobra pose to now stretch out pretty much all of the tightened muscles from sitting. This is arguably one of the single best stretches for sitting because if you go joint by joint, the entire body is almost completely reversed in the stretch position when compared to a typical sitting posture. To do it properly and without aggravating your back, however, you want to execute the following. Lay on your stomach with your feet about hip width apart, toes facing down, and hands by your sides, positioned directly under your shoulders. Next, contract your quads so that your knees are off the ground. Bring your shoulder blades down and back, and then lengthen your spine by thinking about bringing your upper body forward and up by using and engaging your mid and lower back muscles. You should not be muscling your way up by pushing your arms into the ground. They should simply be there for guidance and stability as you lengthen. Hold for a few deep breaths at the top position before coming down and repeating for more reps. The next exercise we'll use here will be used to help correct some of the asymmetries developed from slouching one way when sitting. This causes your muscles in your sides, such as your QL, to tighten up and commonly droop your body one way as a result. 
For these, we'll perform a simple stand and reach where you hold one hand at your hip and then with your other arm, you want to extend up and back behind your body at a diagonal. Think about reaching towards the ceiling and experiment with different angles until you find the angle that best creates a stretch in your side shown here. Hold the end position for about 5 to 10 seconds and then repeat for reps before switching to the other side. And you'll probably notice that one side is tighter than the other as a result of your slouching, in which case you'd want to spend a little bit more time and do more reps on that tighter side. Next, we're going to move on to strengthening some of the weakened upper body muscles. More specifically, the weakened lower traps that contribute to that hunched over posture and the weakened neck flexors that contribute to that forward head posture. To do so, we we'll use wall slides with chin knots. Here, simply stand against a wall with ideally both your upper back and lower back completely flat against it. Then, slide your arms up and down against it like so. Then, with the back of your head against the wall, Simultaneously perform reps of chin knots where you tuck your chin into your chest by using those deep neck flexors to basically give yourself a double chin. As you raise your arms, you should feel a strong contraction in your mid back, and as you perform the chin knots, you should feel the muscles in the front of your neck working. This combination of wall slides and chin knots is an effective way to correct both that hunch posture and that forward head posture at the same time. If the wall slides are too difficult to start though, you can perform shoulder Ws like so as an alternative. Next, it's time to move on to focusing a little bit more on the mid and lower body muscles with the second routine. To start off though, we'll work on thoracic or mid back mobility that gets stiffened from sitting and not only promotes that hunched over posture, but can also lead to problems and compensations in the lower back and lower body as well. To do so, we use thoracic rotations where you get on all fours, sit your hips back towards your heels, place one hand extended out in front of you and the other held behind your neck like so. Then simply bring your elbow down towards the floor and while following your elbow with your eyes, rotate your elbow up towards the ceiling as far as you can, hold the top position briefly and then come back down for more reps before moving to the next side. You should feel a good stretch in your mid back area as you do so. Next, we're going to move on to stretching out the hip flexors which have become tightened over time and are pulling the pelvis into that anterior pelvic tilt. To do so, we use a simple kneeling hip flexor stretch. But the key to this exercise's effectiveness, which most people overlook, is to first posteriorly tilt your pelvis by contracting your glutes and abs. Then, only once you've properly set your pelvis, gently lean forward until you feel a deep stretch in the front hip of your back leg. Hold the end position for 10 deep breaths or so, and then switch to the other side. Next, we're going to move on to a stretch that not only further lengthens the tightened hip flexors, but also helps open up the hips with external rotation and addresses any asymmetries present there to best set us up for success in the strengthening exercise we're going to do next. For these, you can use a couch or any elevated platform and cross your front leg on top of it and fully extend your back leg to lengthen out your hip flexor. Then, with your hands placed on your foot and your knee, Brace your core and simply bend at your hips to bring your chest forward until you feel a deep stretch in the side of your front hip. Hold it there, but feel free to move around at different angles to tweak the stretch a bit. Then you can switch to the other side. You'll likely notice that one side is significantly tighter than the other, especially if you tend to cross your legs quite a bit when you're sitting. If so, spend a little bit more time on the tighter side. And if needed, an alternative is to perform this similar stretch but seated with your foot rested on your opposite knee and again leaning forward by dropping your chest until you feel a stretch. Lastly, we're going to move on to glute bridges to help awaken and strengthen the glutes that tend to become inactive and weakened as a result of prolonged sitting and are now contributing to that anterior pelvic tilt. It's vital that you perform the prior stretches first, however, since research has shown that those tightened muscles we stretch will actually inhibit your glute activation and make it hard for you to effectively use this exercise. So, to perform your glute bridges, lay on your back with your knees bent and feet flat on the floor. Then, first move into posterior pelvic tilt by contracting your glutes and abs. Once that's set, use your glutes to thrust your hips into the air while keeping your back straight rather than arched. Hold the top position while contracting your glutes before coming down for more reps. Over time, you can then progress to single leg glute bridges as you get stronger, which can help correct any strength asymmetries you may have in your glutes. So, here are the two routines all summarized with rep ranges and timing guidance for each of the exercises. 
As for the best way to implement this, there is some research in office workers indicating that for the highest levels of productivity throughout the day, you should take a short break after every 52 minutes of work. Therefore, a good way to easily incorporate these routines is to alternate between each of them after every hour or so of seated work during the day. Regardless though, I suggest aiming to perform both of these routines at the very least once a day and ideally each twice a day if you do sit quite a bit as it's the consistency and the frequency with these routines that's key if you're some so uh, i'm not telling <coughs> do this every one hour but like maybe maybe five ten minutes per day if you can you know, whenever you can i mean walk and stretches stretches he's shown is very easy you can do them in the office or in your room so benefits basically increase confidence more energy uh, greater self-esteem and better mood Easier breathing, just like I'm talking to my wife here. But this is all uh, important. Uh, lesser frequent headaches, uh, reduced risk of injury, boost your productivity, seek help and work, might even give me a medical, yeah. No? So that's it. Thank you so much.